Hello, and my name is Pete Rushmer, and I'm your host today of A Half Dozen Things podcast. A Half Dozen Things is a podcast for business owners just like you. Whether you're an underdog hungry for success, or you're already smashing it, but want to continue to level up, we are here each week for you to get insight and learning from the very best in the business. No fluff, no BS, and no self-proclaimed gurus talking about how easy business or life is. Hello and welcome to today's Lunchtime Live. Uh, my name's Pete and uh, here I am in sunny, sunny South Lincolnshire today actually. Um, it's, a, uh, it's a beautiful day and um, it's, uh, it's absolutely lovely. So I'm really looking forward to sharing some insights today on in particular men's mental health in the workplace. So um, I thought I'd get outside and enjoy the last piece of sunshine. I feel like we're probably going into the depths of autumn pretty soon. And uh, I thought I'd make the most whilst I'm out and about seeing customers. Uh, today, I've been to see a couple of customers today uh, around uh, doing some leadership coaching and those kinds of things. So I'm just going to wait uh, just a moment whilst we wait for people to, to join us uh, for this live, which is due to start at one o'clock. I think it's probably about that time now. So uh, there's kind of six key areas or six, six key areas that I think are really important to focus on in particular regards men's mental health. I think there's lots of, uh, lots of things that companies can think about and organizations can think about to support men in particular. And not just, uh, not just uh, all, of, all people in the workplace need to be looked after. And there's some really great examples out there currently of great practice um, and particularly things that training courses will be able to help support and implement as well as having the relevant policies. But this is just about going that step further and just sort of edging um, edging and involving and encouraging the men in your business or in your organization to participate in those mental health initiatives because it can be a bit trickier sometimes to get male engagement. And, uh, you know, I've found this sort of personally in, in my years as being a mental health trainer and educator in different organizations that actually sometimes men can be a little bit more, not in all cases, but can often be a little bit more reluctant. And um, in particular, some of the industries that flagship partners deal with it can be uh, particularly challenging with hgv drivers people working in warehouses and in workshops and those kinds of things because you, you, we've got this sort of uh, slightly different culture um that the that the men have in a work environment and feel that it's probably not appropriate to be able to bring and talk about their mental health in that in that sense so this video is for you to be able to help understand some of the things that you can do as an organization or as a leader in your organization to help encourage uh, the discussion and encourage supporting the men in, in your organization. So the key, the key thing is around relevancy. So when I do a mental health training for the workplace, uh, I really, really focus on making sure that it's important that we understand that, that men feel included in any initiative or any training that you put on and that actually they're, they're consulted and, and we make sure that we focus on making sure that the men in the business realize it's for them too. Because in it, from a general point of view, and it's very difficult when you talk about different genders, but uh, generally speaking, uh, men will often sit back when it comes to initiatives like this in the findings that we've had and in the, uh, and, um, in, in the different sort of surveys and things like that that we've done in the past. So generally speaking, men will tend to take a back seat unless they believe that it's really relevant and it's really, really important to them uh, that it's part of them them doing it. So the first thing is, are you encouraging uh, male uh, men participation in your mental health initiative? So if you've got a working group, if you've got mental health training, if you're offering that out, mental health first aid, is any of those things, or even the leaders in your business, are you supporting uh, male participation? Because certainly I've been to a lot of uh, and delivered a lot of training courses in my time and often. Um, it's uh, women that will volunteer to do the, uh, the mental health first aid work and, and those kinds of things. So the first step is about making sure that we're encouraging male participation and making sure that they feel included and it's relevant for them too. Uh, the second one is around a men's health support program. So this isn't just focusing on, on mental health, but it, health overall. So I've seen increasingly we do mental health awareness training. Um, and then we are you know, introducing, we're doing a lot more around diversity and inclusion, uh, which is absolutely fantastic. I'm fully behind us doing, doing those. I think it's absolutely fascinating to, 
get involved and get into businesses and uh, organisations to help support them uh, with these uh, with these different awareness sessions. Uh, you know, like I say, equality um, and diversity, neurodiversity is really important too. Um, and increasingly, I'm seeing menopause awareness, for example, which affects both men and women too. And I think it's really important that men um, get uh, are aware of that because particularly uh, partners in their lives, those kinds of things, and obviously they can have hormonal changes and emotional changes as well um, as part of the uh, as part of the maturing process. But what I mean by having support programs specifically for men, what about thinking about prostate awareness, uh, suicide awareness, which is particularly effective. Um, you know, the statistics say that it's a, a big a big factor for for men in in organisations and in the workplace. That suicide is such a challenge. You know, just in construction alone. Um, you know, like two two men a day, I believe, is the statistic around uh, suicide in just the construction sector alone. So it's it's a big thing. And why why aren't we having awareness days just around that, for example, and also around cardiovascular disease and various different men's health or regular and common men's health ailments. I really think that it's important to raise awareness of men's health in in all and uh, making sure that we have those conversations in organisations to help promote a support in men's health. Um, you know, a, a really great example for me was I sat in a meeting probably about six months ago and I had a fantastic, uh, I had a fantastic meeting with one of my clients, but he said that I was a bit red faced and had I had my blood pressure monitored recently and I hadn't done, uh, I went to the doctors and got my blood pressure checked and it turned out that my blood pressure was really, really high and needed some medication. So without that awareness, without that conversation, uh, those things can be going unnoticed and can result in strokes and heart attacks and those kinds of things. So Raising awareness of blood pressure and the different um, different challenges, particularly men, but obviously women as well, um, particularly men can face in an organisation. I think it's really great to start getting those uh, getting people involved. It doesn't just have to be training courses. We can do um, different campaigns around posters and communications and uh, talks during meetings and those kinds of things to just raise awareness and help support uh, the development of that of that uh, dialogue within your organisation. Hi, it's Pete from Flagship Partners. We're proud to sponsor a Half Dozen Things podcast. Flagship Partners help their clients become safer, greener, and greater through a range of consultancy and training services. We offer audits through to risk assessments, contracts through to support with managing your culture, all the way from mandatory training through to management training as well. So if you need any support, please do get in touch with Flagship Partners today. Cool. So the third thing is around culture and long hours, um, people being able to have holidays and get a work life balance. So uh, many of the organizations I go into have quite a poor culture around really, really long hours in particular and the expectation around uh, working particularly long hours, as well as the expectation that people will be contactable during holiday time as well. I think it's really important to have that opportunity for work uh, colleagues to be able to turn their phone off, turn their emails off, and to be able to have some downtime. Um, so that's a third key area is just around culture. I think that sometimes it can be seen that it's important to be important and it's important to be available. And I think sometimes it'd be good for organizations to have a look at that. So that's my third key area. Uh, the fourth one is around having a culture of toxic mascul masculinity. So if you, I don't have time to explain fully what to toxic masculinity is, but it kind of does what it says on the tin. Uh, many, many organizations have this, uh, what I call macho culture around the, you know, that men should be men, uh, men are dominant, men are, are physically strong, um, and uh, admitting to any mental health or uh, uh, disorder or, or any physical ailment or anything that might be a particular challenge for men is something, so excuse the car, um, it's something which is deemed as uh, less, you know, um, unattractive or um, less macho or that there's there's a you know an adverse issue around someone's masculinity around admitting and talking about those challenges because what we need to do is actually focus on trying to change that narrative and making talking about men's health a positive uh, a positive thing and that it takes strength to talk about those things so that's the that's the fourth area and actually it leads on to my fifth which is around how as an organisation do you treat disclosure if uh, if uh, somebody in your business, and this, I believe um, that this particularly affects men, is if they do have a disclosure to their line manager, their leader, um, around some of the challenges they may be facing around their mental health, how do you treat that? How do you deal with that as an organization? Um, because 
how you follow up with those things is is really really vital and making sure that those things are confidential uh making sure that um, the, the men in the men and all people, obviously, like I say, but again, generalizing to men, making sure that they feel properly supported, listened to, and, uh, the right support being given. And as always making sure that there's, you know, that there, there is full, um, there's full support to make sure that people don't go talking behind their backs and those kinds of things. Cause sometimes this can be a real challenge. It's something I've come across where people start to gossip and talk about some of the challenges that people are facing. And that will prevent people coming forward. In particular, it will prevent men if they have a fear of judgment, um, if they have a fear of disclosing something and not being properly supported or having an adverse reaction to their role. As well as, obviously, it's important when opening up and talking about stress can be a challenge. If someone's particularly career driven, if they believe that's going to have a negative impact on their um, on their career prospects, then that can obviously be a challenge and prevent people coming forward as well. And sometimes they'll just leave as well. So you'll lose talent. So I think it's absolutely vital that we we treat disclosure in the right way. And we have a, a process that is agreed and followed as part of any disclosure or discussion that anyone comes forward for in your organization. And the sixth one is around the final one, which is around encouraging open dialogue. So are we encouraging people to come forward and speak. And one of the great ways of getting men to engage and to, to come come as part of the narrative is to make them feel like it's welcome, make them feel like they're helping, they're supporting others as, it, as engaging as part of that dialogue. Um, a really, really important part of making sure that we're supporting men's health in the workplace. Uh, as I speak, I'm just about to be passed by a cheeky truck. Probably just pick that up in the micro in the microphone there. Um, like I say, I'm in lovely South Lincolnshire. It's very leafy. I'm very much enjoying the sunshine, and um, I hope that this lunchtime live has been helpful for you. Um, I hope it's been interesting and encourages a dialogue. If you would like support with your mental health initiatives or the health initiatives in your workplace uh, or any leadership training, then please do get in touch. I'd be more than happy to help support that. I hope this has been really useful and uh, that it's lunchtime now for many people who work uh, the sort of no no normal nine to five. Many people in my network won't do. Uh, but if you are, make sure you get outside, make sure you get some fresh air and make the most of the sunshine. Thank you very much. I really hope you loved today's episode. And if you did, please make sure you subscribe and listen out for future episodes too. Please do share it across your social media channels. We hope to reach more and help more people. If you want to find out more about me, my name's Pete Rushmer. You'll find me across any social media channel and my business, Flagship Partners, and we're your partners in success across your business. Thank you. See you again soon.